Ah, wenn ich habe, welcome to another episode for the Funkit Pod. Uh, it's wrestling time, it's Wednesday, and you know what this means, wrestling Wednesday. I'm not doing them a lot anymore because, let's be honest, life happens, I have lots of things to do, um, but this one I have to just combine work and fun, enjoyment, uh, so this is also part of the Media Prof React to wrestling, and I'm reacting to actually two things, I'm reacting to AW as well as to um, WWE. And I do this because, well, as a, as a professor in, in, in media studies, um, we talk a lot about storytelling, production, but storytelling, um, I do a lot of dig digital stuff, digital strategies and so on, but storytelling is a, is a big part of like lots of our classes uh, at uni. And the storytelling in wrestling right now, in parts of wrestling right now, is fantastic. It's as good as good as it gets, as good as it has been in, in a long, 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 long time. And I want to just give like a few examples, maybe two or three examples, right? So I'll start with AW and I'll end with WWE. So AW just had the Revolution pay-per-view. And I have to, have to admit, for the past year or so, I lost more and more interest in AW. I still follow them on the so social media. Every time I see them, I'm like, oh God, why are you doing this right now? So I used to, As you can also see from my podcast history, I used to be a huge fan when it all started. First year, first two years, I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. It's different. The stories make sense. It's awesome. They lost this a little bit, in, in, in my humble opinion. I know I'm not, not a wrestling journalist. I don't give out stars. Completely arbitrary stars. I don't give them out. Um, but if I would, I would have given out five or maybe even six this past week. <laughs> um, and... But the thing is, like the the, the Revolution pay per view showcased perfectly why I lost interest in AW, but also showcased perfectly why for a long time I loved it and why there's still hope, why there's still something that keeps me attached to it. Like I, I think I, I left some comments that are not hate. I, I don't do hate comments on social media. I just said like, man, on, on one of the, the the posts of AW, I was like, man, I remember when I when I was all in for AW. Now it's that it feels like like a long time ago, and then I had like this this half crying emoji, just like this. That's how I felt in the moment. I was like, ah, what I'm seeing right now, it's ah, it feels like WWE like a year ago. I'm like, ah, yeah. And then I got lots of hate replies that I'm like, why? Like, let me have my opinion, right? If you have a different opinion, great. But I'm just trying to explain why I have this opinion, why why I think that way. So sometimes organic things happen. We've seen it in WWE way back when, Daniel Bryan. Um, now we've seen it, Bryan Danielson. Um, we've seen it with, with, um, with the, the scissor me daddy ass, which is silly, but it's funny in AW, right? So it, it, and it happened organically, which is great. So the acclaimed have arrived, which is great. So that's a great, even though maybe I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I totally appreciate the crowd interaction, the organic rise of the acclaimed, for example. It was fantastic. Um, now, do I think it was the right call to have the, the ass boys be champions? No. Do I appreciate that FTR is back? Uh, and uh, yes. So I, I'm happy that FTR is back because old school, yeah, FTR. Um, their shirts looked like NXT though, to be honest. So I'm, I'm not reviewing the whole pay-per-view, don't worry, but I was just like a few highlights I'm going to pick at in terms of like why I like it, why I still struggle with a few things and so on, right? Um, so yeah, F FTR adds some seriousness to it, which is which is which is great. Um, again, the shirts looked like NXT though. Uh, other than that, House of House of Black um, trios champions, good because they seem to be really over with um, the audience. So for some, I I'm not a big fan, and I I, I love like Malachi Black's like. Muay Thai actually like the, the head kicks and stuff they, they look like actual Muay Thai and I do lots of Muay Thai so they look like actual Thai boxing which is great so I, I love that I just don't like that, that, that goofy stuff like the horns and everything um, but yeah okay um, they're over with the audience so great good call um, good on them um, but yeah so that's one of the things that it's which I can appreciate because they're over with the audience. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan, but it's great because the audience loves it. So good. Where I could just lost like interest or which I just couldn't really care for was in the, the, the women's match. Um, Ruby Soho is just 
it just uh, I'm sorry. I I don't want don't, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything, right? So uh, just not captivating me. I'm sorry. Um, Jericho Jer Jericho wasn't a great match, but gotta give it to him. He's not clinging on to the the main event spot or anything like that. He opens the show and puts over younger talent. Even though Ricky Starks has been around for a while, but puts it puts him over somehow. Um, so, okay, but what? Of course, we have to talk about. Um, It's not Wardlow. <laughs> That's the thing that where, where it's losing me again. Um, but what we of course have to talk about is the main event, right? I think hands down MJF is the best heel in the business right now. Yes, even compared to Roman Reigns, and I will explain in just a second. And Roman Reigns is awesome too. So it doesn't mean you can only have one. I think they both are doing awesome work. I just think from a heel perspective, MJF is doing like bit better just for me because it's just more psychological work as well roman reigns is just like this force that can be stopped and which is which is great uh but has has his people backing him up and so on like they're like this this mean fact like yeah great but mtf is just doing it all more or less by himself And those psychological games, I, I just like it. He's like more like an asshole villain. Uh, can I say? I can say it on YouTube, right? Um, and I just, I just gravitate more towards that. Um, I like when he comes out with the devil's mask because he calls himself the devil, and I, I, I don't know why, but I like it. I like that that mask in particular. I loved when he came back as a Joker six months ago, um, when the Rolling Stone with the Rolling Stones song, like please allow me to introduce myself. Fantastic. Um, He should, that should be his walkout song, to be honest. Um, I like the walkout then uh, at the at the pay per view with the the string quartet or the the the, the orchestra, whatever you call it, or the string quartet, right? And it was cool, um, and the match was great. And he's a yeah. People who say he can't wrestle, clearly just hating because he can wrestle, and they made a point of showcasing towards the end. Those wrestling wrestle exchanges between Brian Danielson and him was fantastic, and also huge credit to Brian Danielson. Like I think most of us thought MJF going to retain, but it's Brian Danielson, so you never know, right? I mean, he's a huge star, and he got the crowd really excited, really hyped up. Like they're doing the yes chance, and he's like with his arm. Going. It was fantastic. This match for me, best match of the year so far. It was awesome, and I came into that event not being all hyped up. I like MJF. I like Brian Danielson for what he does. Not a biggest fan, but I like for like what he brings to the table. Um, the intensity in the ring, for example. Uh, I didn't expect that much. It was awesome. I watched it completely. I didn't skip. I didn't fast forward or anything, which I did with lots of other matches. I think was I think the storytelling in this match was also great. This back and forth, who gets the first fall, who gets the second fall, um, then MJF of, of course trying to cheat obviously, and then actually also using um, the oxygen tank to his advantage was great. The call in by Tony Khan to make sure that it's like uh, a sudden death. Sudden death should be like the autom the automatic thing. Once you're over 60 minutes, it should be like a sudden death, right? But okay, whatever. Um, still good. Uh, the crowd being all for Brian Danielson um, you're almost believing him he's gonna pull it off because he's got all the momentum so this storytelling got me it was just awesome and I mean I don't want to pick it apart if you haven't watched it watch watch that match if you say like hey AW is not my thing what are you talking about I'm all about the bloodline I get it but watch that match if you can just watch that match try to be unbiased watch MJF versus Brian Danielson it's awesome And again, you don't need to hate each other, AEW fanboys, WWE fanboys. Just appreciate good wrestling. And AEW, in this case, MJF, I, I wrote a comment too like on, on AEW's post. I, I'm, say, I'm saying a, MJF is saving AEW right now. For me, like to, again, personal point of view, the storytelling was fantastic. Um, how he tried to use the belt, but then didn't do it because the ref took it away and then he had the ring, but then he couldn't use the ring. Awesome! And then... The, the tap, but it wasn't a tap. And uh, ah, you're so involved, and you understand why Brian Nelson reacts the way he reacts. And yes, yes, yes. Great. So, not even Tony Khan can F that up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, it was fantastic. So, for me, best match um, 
in in a long time in AW and probably the best match thus far. I would put it match wise over Sami Zayn Roman Reigns. Audience wise, reaction wise, investment wise, Sami Zayn Roman Reigns. But like match wise, I think that was that was better. Yeah. Okay, that brings me to the bloodline, the ones. Um, to WWE so there are a few things there was no pay-per-view um, uh, this week right but uh, well we had Smackdown for example with John Cena being there and that's John Cena still gets a reaction it's great John Cena unfortunately still the best talker in WWE and it's really annoying and it just showed you like he he's facing Austin Theory at WrestleMania right Austin Theory came out and that's one of two things I want to wanna pick, pick um, apart or pick on he came out offering the title um, shot to John Cena because he admired him so much. He used to watch him as a kid and so on, blah, blah, making fun of John Cena's hair. And John Cena's like taking off the head like, yeah, uh, I, uh, it's it's cool. I, I embrace it. Um, what else should he do? <laughs> and then John Cena obliterates um, Austin Theory on the mic. And maybe that's to put him, I, I would assume John Cena is going to put over Austin Theory because John Cena wants to, wants to be the company man and wants to elevate the next talent. And Austin Theory still seems to be like the chosen one for WWE, but his mic skills are just so bad. Like, unfortunately, what John Cena said is correct. No one cares about him, about Austin Theory. He has so many opportunities, he never uses them. Uh, and by now you just want to see him fail. I hope, so I hope John Cena, I, I don't know what, but what would it do for John Cena? What would they do for the, I don't know, for the title, for the storyline? Like if John Cena wins, and I never say this, I hope John Cena wins, right? But I, oh my God, I hate Austin Theory. And I don't hate him like a heel. I hate him just because he's so, he's so boring. Like once when he comes on the screen, I, I usually fast forward. I just didn't do it because it was. I wanted to hear what John Cena had to say. So <laughs> at least they got me invested there. But um, yeah, so Austin Theory is just, uh, and it sucks to say that Cena is still one of the best talkers um, because it's been for a long time. There should be someone else. It should be. It should be up there by now. Um, so I, I hope someone else can just grab the brass knuckles and just run with the microphone eventually the brass microphone um yeah so then but then there was what was awesome of course again storyline development bloodline um jay jimmy uso um, you think oh no who's are they gonna reunite no it's no we're gonna be we have like the uzi ones with Sami Zayn, and then the crowd goes wild. So yeah, Sammy got his body and then he betrays him. He kicks, super kicks him. Like, and then goes like, oh, the bloodline is stronger. The family, is, uh, no, nothing beats family and so on. So the Usos are reunited. The bloodline is reunited. Beating down Sammy Sane and Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes comes out, saves him. This is the only way, and well done, where WWE can make us be okay with Sami Zayn not headlining WrestleMania. We are all like, we want Sami Zayn headlining WrestleMania. He should be in a triple threat match and so on. But this now makes you want to be like, okay, Sami Zayn needs to fight the Usos now. So now we're going to be okay with it, with probably Sami and KO fighting the, U the Usos at WrestleMania. Before we are like, no, he needs to be there against Roman Reigns. But now you're like, okay, take the Usos out first and then go after Roman again. And now Cody helping helping Sami Zayn also like throws him in the mix somehow, uh, so that that the people the audience cheers for him. Storytelling wise, well done, well executed. And that was something I was missing like a year ago. And that was the exact opposite. AW did like the storytelling well, and WWE did like nothing in storytelling terms. And now the story is just great. The matches still not always the best, like the, those filler matches. Sorry, um, but those main event spots are fantastically well booked, and the story makes so much sense. And you're like, okay, I'm on board. Sami saying, go get those Usos now. Great, fantastic. Use all the momentum. You're not losing any anything. Even though I still would love to see Sami saying in the main event beating Roman Reigns, obviously. But now you would understand why he's going after the Usos. It's fantastic storytelling. The media pro for teacher storytelling is super happy with that. How do you feel about it? How do you how do you feel? Do you think MJF 
is the best heel. Do you think Roman is the best heel? MJF also exp in, in this press thing then saying like, well, uh, I don't need a team to back me up to, to do all this. <laughs> um, so who's the best heel in, in the business? What do you think? Who, who are you rooting for? You're rooting against, but who gets you triggered the most? And what do you think about those stories right now in, in wrestling? Um, so again, while I think MJF is the best heel and that match was the best match this year, The storyline, bloodline, semi Saiyan is of course the best storyline. It's, it's been going on for so long. It's fantastic. So what are your thoughts on, on this? Let me know. It's either social media at funkitpod, funkitpod at gmail.com or like leave comments wherever you, you can here. Like, share, subscribe, rate this podcast. Uh, maybe we'll do more wrestling content again now that I know I, I'm, I, I'm kind of like bitten by the bug a little bit more again after seeing like all those awesome stories. So let's see. What are your thoughts? Shout out. Let me know. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, stay safe. Take care. Don't forget to always kick out a two. Until then, Sawadee Kappa.